In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Three weeks ago in our service, when we examined Isaiah chapter 40, verses 25 through 31, I offered what I hope was a clear reminder that no one here is an accident or the result of some kind of cosmic mistake. God created you, and he placed you here in this life as a result of his divine love. He has a plan in place for each of us. We acknowledge this as we confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed, which summarizes the creation account given to us by Moses' hand, and which is referenced many times throughout the rest of Holy Scripture. So we have the how of our existence. God created us using his powerful word, and he gave the command to our first parents to be fruitful, to multiply, to fill the earth, and subdue it. That is how we are here. But what about the why? Why are we here? Peter's words for us in the epistle lesson read this evening help us see. The hymn that we just sang pointed to it clearly. Peter first points to the reality that every day following Christ's ascension into heaven could very well be the last day. We know it is coming, but we do not know when. Nor should we try to figure it out or claim that we do. Many false teachers have done this and have therefore done damage to the church's witness to the world. Peter writes, not with specifics, but with what we already know, the end of all things is at hand. Well, such doom and gloom might inspire despair in those that hear these words, but this is not Peter's point. He continues, Therefore be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. He's calling on Christians to know that the end can be at any time, but also to be paying attention, to be alert and aware of their surroundings, and to be regular in prayer. And that's not all. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Love is what inspired God to create us. Love is what moved him to send his son into our flesh to redeem us. His love is most visible in Christ's sacrificial death and in his glorious victory over it in his resurrection. Love is what drives the Spirit to work faith in our hearts through the gifts of Holy Baptism, Holy Communion, and the Holy Scriptures. And as we see here, love is what Peter calls us to walk in and to share freely. This is why each of us is alive today. God uses us to be instruments of his love. He gives more insight as to what sharing God's love looks like. He says, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Christ Jesus. Our lives are proof of God's love. And so, our lives ought to reflect God's love. Peter's description in this passage shows us what living like a Christian should look like. Forgiveness is at the heart of it. It is, in fact, the foundation of our faith. And it is to be shared freely and regularly with all those who confess and repent. We pray it every day. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We know also from Jesus' own words that a refusal to forgive anyone is a mark of unbelief. It is not how Christians live. And Peter wants us to be reminded of this truth. Hospitality and service are also how we live as God's people for the sake of the neighbor. 
There are many opportunities here in our church and in our school for members to be involved and to help out. If you don't often do this, I hope you'll consider changing that. Look for opportunities that fit well with what you do and with your schedule, and join us. This is how we glorify God with the lives that he's given us. And this is how we point everyone, our fellow believers and those outside of the faith, to Christ's perfect life of love and sacrifice. How are we here? God created us out of love. Why are we here? To receive and reflect that love to the world around us in order that more people might see and know and regularly experience it as it is delivered in the means of grace. So God's blessings to you, each of you, as you go forward in the ways that God is using you to reflect his love. Amen. We stand and sing the offertory as printed in the order of service. <laughs>